<laughs> My bad. I'll hate so them just that. If you're just getting started with some weight gain goals, this might be a good approach. Especially if you're somebody who struggles to eat enough as is. Maybe this number of calories up here. If you're looking for more of an aggressive approach, this 500 calories is going to be more of what you want to add on to your everyday. So calorie surplus is the first key, okay? We have to be in a surplus if we want to weight gain. If you're coming in the gym, working your butt off four or five times a week, you're under eating, you ain't going to gain weight because we're nowhere near this calorie intake probably. And we're struggling against that addition. So, any questions on that? I just have a random question. Okay. About that box at the bottom. So, it, it says sedentary, low active, mm -hmm. very active. Yes. What constitutes? I know it's sedentary, right? Right. But, like, but times what is per week. Low active, right? Because yes. I'm, and I'm asking this because it's always marked low active for me because I work out like every day. Yes. It's only like an hour a day. Okay, so in addition to your one hour workouts every day, you are sitting down. Or are you doing any day, but yes. Okay. So for you, you would probably want to look at, well, and it would depend on your training plan. You're working out pretty intensely. How many days a week? Uh four to five days a week. Okay, so I would consider you active category rather than low active. Low active would be somebody who's like a casual gym goer two, three times a week. They're not sedentary, but they're adding a little something. So maybe they are still going one hour workouts, three, two, three, two, three, three, but they're not quite that step up to pretty active. Highly active would be somebody who is working out twice a day, four to five times a, a week, multiple hours at a time. Right now, I just never understood how that was marked. So that yeah, does that help? My curiosity. Yeah, that low activity. It really depends on what that person's training plan is because if they're consistently coming in three times a week and maybe they're working out with their trainer hour, hour and a half, then that might be that space between low active and active. And so that's where the hard math doesn't really benefit us. It does take some plug and play, but if you can track your progress consistently and say, okay, maybe we're doing body fat every 90 days. We're not seeing any changes. I've been tracking my nutrition, no changes towards my goals. They will need to make some adjustments. So that's why tools like that are super helpful. Yeah. So first key, calorie surplus. 250 calories in addition to your day, less aggressive approach, 500 calories per day, more aggressive approach. No questions on that? That was a good one though, because those factors are a great area. Second factor is what? So you've got your macro sheet there. This might be a review for some of y'all, maybe not. But when it comes to healthy, successful weight gain, we gotta focus on whole food nutrition. We all know we can gain weight by going to McDonald's and Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A and Canes multiple days a week. But that's not the healthy weight gain we're looking for. That kind of eating is going to be very high in saturated fat, overall calories, lots of fat. Those are the calories that we really wanna limit. So we're not trying to put on fat, we're trying to put on muscle. So what do we need to be eating? Whole food nutrition. And by that, what I mean is our macros. So I like to call macros or macronutrients, which is a long term, big umbrella term. Underneath that umbrella term, we got food groups. Okay, so macros, proteins, carbohydrates, fats. Then these food groups here are what you see within your circles or your boxes. So like some of these foods, for example, our purple box and our green box, that one's gonna be, okay, they've got some carbs, some proteins, some fats, some proteins. Okay, so it's not all black and white there. You've got some mixed foods. But we have to make sure that we're getting adequate amounts of our macronutrients and appropriate amount of our food groups in order to be gaining weight in a healthy way. So can anybody tell me what they think we need to prioritize most of our three macros? Proteins, carbs, or fats? Okay. Are we for sure? Are we feeling good about that answer? Okay. Anybody else? Object, agree? Protein. You agree so, too. Carbs. Or carbs. It's protein or carbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. They're both king here. 
we've got to prioritize both of those. So like protein, are we hitting our protein goals? Maybe not, maybe yes, but we also have to be prioritizing carbohydrates. We can't have the conversation of protein and leave out the carbohydrates. If you've ever come in the gym here and tried to work out on a low carb day, you're feeling pretty crummy. So we have to have that conversation of, are we getting enough protein? Are we getting enough carbohydrates? So for weight gain, just some general guidelines, where we need to be with overall calories, how much percent of my overall calories, just a range, 20 to 25% of your overall calories need to be coming from protein. Okay, so prior, prioritize that protein at every single meal. Spread it out, we'll get more into the win at key number three. Anybody wanna guess how much how many percentage-wise of carbohydrates we need for weight gain coming from carbohydrates? Weight gain? For weight gain. My fitness pal says 50%. <laughs> <laughs> My fitness pal says, so that's what we're going like Anybody else want to guess? That is a good answer, Steve. That was a good answer. I would agree with my fitness pal a little bit, but we're going 50 to 60% for weight gain. And this would be less aggressive approach, okay? This would be that more aggressive approach. What we can't do is, okay, I wanna gain weight, I wanna gain muscle, I want that body palette to say the numbers that I want about my muscle gain when I get in there next. For the last three months, coach, I've been prioritizing my protein, I've been nailing my intake every single day, seven days a week, let's say you just blew it out of the park. But I look at your food log and you have very little carbohydrate intake, and we're getting nowhere near this 50 to 60%. I'd say that's probably why. One, you might not be performing in your workouts like you really could be. Two, we didn't see the changes that we were looking for. So carbohydrates are our body's preferred source of fuel. Okay, so when you look at the carbohydrate foods on there, what stands out to you? Any myths about carbs you think, you've heard that you're like, well, 50 to 60% you'd be eating that? The one that I always hear, uh, is the bread and the pasta and white bread specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I hear, like, you should cut it. Yeah. Anything, anything you've heard about why you should be cutting them? They call them bad carbs. Bad carbs. So where that comes from is we have two different types of carbohydrates. We got complex carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. Our refined grains, like our breads, our pastas that are the, or the white rice, things like that, tend to fall in our simple carbohydrates category. Not always though. Cookies, cakes, sweets, those kind of things also fall in the simple carbohydrates. Those we definitely want to limit. Complex carbs, on the other hand, are going to be more along the lines of what you're seeing there. Okay, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and starches. They absolutely still have a place in our diet, especially when weight gain is our goal. Okay, if you're in here busting your butt, you got to have some carbs to fuel. Your body is preferring that you have 50 to 60 percent of your overall calories coming from carbohydrates with adequate protein, with adequate fat intake, which we haven't even talked about. But if I had to pick two kings, macronutrients for weight gain, carb and protein. So there really wasn't a right answer, I tricked you, but <laughs> all right. So any questions on that? Where do y'all think y'all stand in terms of if weight gain is your goal, or maybe you're just trying to make general nutrition changes? How do we do with protein? You think you're eating? You're are you on my fitness pal right now? How are we doing with protein on the 20 to 25 percent? Obviously, the half my body weight. Okay, yeah, there's lots of different ways to do it, but this is just a general rule. Um, so far I've been reaching it. Okay, how are we doing with carbs? Carbs, I'm a little bit under. Okay, I'm a little bit over with the fat. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because when we're eating high amounts of protein, we tend to get in the fat category because if you look at your macro chart there, some foods fall in line with some gray area, all right? So like high fat steak, high fats. If you're getting a chicken, uh, rotisserie chicken from the grocery and you're not peeling that skin off, that's going to have some fat in it. So Make sure that you get familiar with this chart right here or just a macro list in general and understanding, okay, 
I'm prioritizing my protein intake, but what kind of protein choices am I choosing? Is it causing my fat to go way up? Then I might need to look at getting leaner ground beef, leaner like ground turkey breast, ground chicken breast, chicken tenderloins, whatever you want to do, pork loins even, all kinds of different things, but you might need to look at that fat intake as well. What kind of proteins have you been choosing that you noticed are driving up your fat? Well, I just changed to eating egg whites. I used to just use, eat regular eggs. Mm -hmm. And I know that it has some fat in it, but I don't know. I don't know why my fat's so high. <laughs> what about anybody else? How are we doing with protein? Is anybody else logging on my fitness call right now? I am. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. I'm actually where I need to be, but I haven't even logged my lunch yet. Okay. Um, so I'm logging right now. Uh, so my carb right now is at 48% of 50. Okay. And my protein is actually over um, 29%, 20%. Okay. And my fat have, is way under. Right now. Okay. Have you hit your calorie goal yet? So the screen I really like to look at on my fitness cup, you go to the bottom of your diary, hit that nutrition tab, mm -hmm. then you're gonna see three tabs. I like the nutrients tab. So if you click on the nutrients tab at the top in the middle. Oh, okay. that, better. that one better. gives, I think, just a more accurate picture of what's going on because if you haven't reached your actual calorie goal for the day yet, those percentages on that pie chart, they're off. But if you have your goal set up correctly, that line graph essentially, or that fill in the bar there, I like that one a lot better. So look at that one throughout the day and see how you're doing. Anybody else? How are we doing with carbs and protein? On my fitness pal. I haven't What? I haven't recorded. You haven't been recording and you're not getting your points, right? <laughs> I recorded record last week. I hope y'all go back and look. <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot too. <laughs> different calorie goals, right? But those are just some sample meal plans. But um, Thank you. just don't underestimate the role that carbohydrates play, especially when we're trying to build muscle, we're trying to gain weight, even if weight gain is not our goal, okay? Let's say we're just trying to improve our nutrition, get a healthy balanced diet. Carbohydrates are still an important factor as well. We just have to factor in what kind of carbs are we eating? Are we eating more of the fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and starches? Are we eating cookies, cakes, and little buddies? <laughs> yeah. All right. So any questions on what we're supposed to be eating? We didn't talk a whole lot about fat, but I did touch just a little bit. Check in with your fat intake because your protein choices might be causing that number to go up. Any questions on that? Is that review for anybody? News to anybody? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so let's talk about the win because this topic is going to be different for every single one of you. How your day is structured, what your work day looks like, what your school day looks like, your extracurricular activities, when your workout is. So there is no right or wrong answer, but if weight gain is your goal, you have to prioritize getting in more than one or two meals. I guarantee you're not going to get this calorie goal here, plus your extra 250 to 500 if you're eating one or two meals a day trying to do intermittent fasting. It ain't going to happen. It's just not. So what I would recommend at a minimum, three meals a day. Okay. So maybe you need a second lunch, as we like to call it. So that's going to be four meals for your day. Maybe you need a snack in there. You're going to have to figure out, okay, here's my calorie goal. Here's my carb and my protein goals. How am I doing with it? Then structure your day, but we're going three meals, all right, at a minimum. Anybody doing three meals or more? Three meals, two snacks. All right, yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, so for some people, it is going to be upwards of five and six. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be important too. If weight gain is our goal, we got to make the most of those meals. So are we adding on that extra 250 to 500 a day? We might be upwards of 700. If you're eating five or six meals a day and your, your goal is weight gain, you might be adding close to 700 a day of calories. So yeah, create a consistent, whoops, create a consistent meal time. So if you 
Monday through Friday, we're looking good. Weekends, we're off the chain doing something totally different than our Monday through Friday. We might be struggling to hit our goals because if we're doing really good Monday, even through Thursday, hitting our calories, our macros look good. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're out partying, lots of alcohol, extra foods. That's going to throw it off. The more consistent we can be seven days a week, at least keeping some consistent meal times. On Saturday, if maybe we wake up a little bit later than usual, at least get that first meal in. Don't say, oh, well, I got a cookout to go to this afternoon, so I'm going to hold off. I'm just going to save all my calories. Please don't do that because when you get there, they're not going to be foods that we usually eat. They're not really going to fit our goals. Go into that meal knowing, okay, I already had at least one good meal today. So I'm prioritizing protein and carb. And then we're not skipping meals. We're not getting out of our usual routine. So the more consistent we can be with those meal times, the better. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So on the weekend, I don't work out on the weekend. Yeah. So I'm not as hungry mm -hmm. as I am, let's say, on today. Yeah. Am I to eat the same amount of calories? Because that is a struggle for me. Yeah. Do you know how different the calories are weekend versus weekdays or workout day versus um, not? I mean, I, I struggle to get up to 2,000 on the weekend. Okay. That, that depends. What I would recommend to you is if you're truly not hungry, don't force it. But if you're keeping your consistent meal times and your snacks, maybe the meals just aren't as large. I'm fine with that. That's fine. Uh, but maybe you, let's say you had a really tough week in the gym, you're feeling extra hungry on the weekend, still stay within those goals that you would Monday through Friday or whatever. Yeah. Good question. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you think, Dan? I know. <laughs> the wheels are turning. <laughs> the wheels are turning. I'm going to go get my water. What about you, E? What's your eating schedule look like? Um, I always eat breakfast. I always skip breakfast. Um, <clears throat> lunch is always either baked chicken or fish. And then dinner, uh, I eat a salad sometimes, like a chicken salad or, um, I don't know. My, Let's go back to your lunch. Yeah. So you got your protein. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, rice. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, then after that, I might just have, like I said, a salad. After I always eat a salad when it's getting later in the day because mm -hmm. I don't usually have a full meal like before I go to bed. Yeah, okay. So you're doing breakfast, you're doing lunch, mm -hmm. a light third meal of the day. Mm -hmm. Any snacks? Yeah, I snack a lot. Okay. I'm a snacker for sure. Okay. I eat a lot of snacks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> so I wonder if increasing your actual meals, what you're having at those meals would be helpful for you so you're not grazing snacking throughout the day. Yeah. Could be something you look at. What I like to call our food groups is components. So maybe you need to add components to your meals to make them more full. Oh, yeah, I'm not that. getting a lot of steak and potatoes. Steak and potatoes. Okay. Are there any foods on your list that you know maybe you're not getting enough of? Uh, fruit and veggies. Fruit and veggies, yeah. So I that one tends to be on, you eat a lot of fruit? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So fruit and veggies tend to be a challenge for a lot of people, all right? But there's a lot of benefits to them. So lots of nutrients in there, micronutrients, fiber. Most Americans are not getting enough fiber, and fiber is crucial for our gut health. So if you're lacking in the fruit and vegetable department, highly recommend looking at that as like a focus goal, maybe for this challenge. I think we're logging like getting points for vegetables. Is that next week? I think so. This week. This week. Okay, so this week, I think so. It's on the, <laughs> so, chart. It's on the chart, though. What a lovely time to look at vegetable intake. Yeah? That is not my favorite. Um, it gives me gas, but I do love broccoli. Yeah, so how, what, when? These are the three keys. If muscle gain, weight gain is your goal, creating consistency with these three things right here is going to get you those goals. Consistency is key, not perfection, but you got to be consistent. And I would say measuring your progress every 90 days, get in that bod pod, do a check-in with me. If you want me to review your food logs, make sure you're actually getting what you're supposed to be getting. 
um, those can all be helpful things. So, any other questions? I would love for you to look at my log. I've been logging since January the 1st. Go! So I'm okay, Marissa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I paid for it on accident, so I was just like, I'm going to use it. Right. Yeah. Yes. It, was, it was an accident. Yeah. So, oops. But uh, I know I'm not consistent, and I snack a lot because I have active boys. So they snack, I snack, we all snack together. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you find you snack when you're even when you're not hungry, or are you truly hungry? When I'm not hungry. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Every <Episode>. time <laughs> snacking. <laughs> Snacks. Snacks. Well, it depends on what kind of snacks you eat, too, like though. It does. Yeah, exactly. I had a PB&J today. Right. Yogurt. Um, I might eat some um, cinnamon crackers and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Vegetables. I got to play the on a snack. <laughs> what I was, will say is if you feel like you're snacking frequently because you're truly hungry, then we need to add components to our main meals. And then use snacks to our benefit, too. And that Slim Plus, was you drinking that Slim Plus? No, no that's I not guess. what that was. Well, it's helped um, with my snacking as well. Really? It, yeah, yeah, it really right. do. <laughs> so, I have one every day. Yeah. If you'll want me to review any of your food logs throughout the challenge, send me an email. Um, I don't. I do have some of my cards, so you can have my direct email address. And send me your username, and I'll take a look at it. Oh, okay. I need to get on my desktop version then. My app doesn't tell me when people send me a friend request. So, yeah, pass those around. If you know what your calorie goal is right now, just take a screenshot of that. I also have a... Do you have a 2,500 There is a 2,500, yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, I can be under 2,000. <laughs> there is an over. There's, there's two under you know, two thousand. At one point, I was going for thirty five a day. Really? Yeah. I was like, I was yeah. You probably <laughs> didn't need a lot of snacks. Yeah, there. I was eating a lot. Yeah. Yeah. When you get upwards of three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, you do have to use snacks to your benefit big time. Thank but you guys. I have a meal planning software called Eat Love. Since you all came to this workshop, I want you guys <laughs> to try it out. Um, it is very interactive on your end. So. I put in the back end what your calorie goals are. Oh, you want to take pictures? Okay. Um, Did you get them? You yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I put in the back end what your calorie goals are, preferences, if you have food allergies, things like that. And then we can generate a meal plan for you, but it gives you the option to swap out recipes if you're like, nothing worse than me giving you this printout of this meal plan you're never going to eat anything on, right? But you get in there, you can uh, look through the recipe database, which is really cool and swap out. So since y'all came to this, I'm going to give you access to that for four weeks. So oh, try it out. So and, nice. uh, yes. I want to see that. I want to take a picture of the 1800 on your phone. And did you have a 25? Somebody did. See ya. See you next see Wednesday when I'm dying. Right. <laughs> I think, are you higher than 2500 right now? Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. am. Okay, the Eat Love will be helpful for you then, more so than that. Yeah, I definitely want to, because I need to get my life. I'm not consistent at all. Consistency is helpful, but you definitely don't have to be perfect. Sometimes having just somebody from the outside looking in on it, instead of you trying to go back through all your logs, is super helpful. But thank you all for coming, and nice to meet you. It was so great. Thank you. I know. That was such you. a great session. Email me with any questions y'all have, but I want to get Coach, you don't have any questions, do you? Not at the moment. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> Who is on there? Lauren. Oh, hey, Lauren. Do you have any questions? Not at the moment. I missed like the first 10-ish minutes, um, but I would like one of those flyers if you can like leave it in the gym. I will leave the stack that I have left. It's the macros. Yes. It's yes. also in the, um, what's it called? Dropbox, but I'll leave them on the shelf over there. Thank you. Thank you. See y'all. All right, coach. I'll see y'all. Talk to you. Thanks. No problem. See ya.